Okay, everybody, why don't we get started? Uh, my name is Joyce Raimondo. I am at the Paula Krasna House and Study Center in East Hampton, where I'm the education coordinator. And East Hampton, of course, is about 100 miles east of New York City. And this site is the home and studio of the famous abstract expressionist artist, Pollock and Krasner. And I'm very grateful to say that this area has historically been a haven for artists, um, attracting um, artists from New York City, who there were various waves when they moved out here, the Impressionist, the Surrealist, and the Abstract Expressionist. And it's a particularly good area for artists because it is spectacularly beautiful. The light is incredible. We're surrounded by water. And at the time, of course, in the 40s and 50s, when the abstract expressionists came out here, it was very affordable. And you can hop on a train and get back to New York City. So uh, today, it is still a haven for artists, although the milieu has changed because it is very expensive nowadays. So today we are honoring, and I'm gonna spotlight myself, uh, we're honoring a very good friend of mine who is a scholar, an educator, an artist, an intellect really, um, Ellen Frank, who lived and worked in East Hampton Springs. And um, Ellen and I met uh, over 20 years ago. And I recall we would meet at the local coffee shop at John Papa's and we would discuss our visions and our creative endeavors. And Ellen said she had a vision to um, create cities of peace and have them shown throughout the world to promote world peace and to work with people worldwide um, on this vision of bringing peace through art, um, through this project. And, you know, like any vision, when you start out, you know, there's a lot of insecurity, there's a lot of unknowns. And it was truly something to see how this vision came to life. And we're gonna honor Ellen's uh, creative legacy, her life, and also um, we're going to focus in particular on cities of peace. So we have her husband, uh, Stephen Dickman here, and um, many of the interns and the um, other people who worked with Ellen directly and friends, and we're all welcome to share. So what I'd like to do to start is I'm gonna show a video. And uh, this video was recorded May, 2020 at the beginning of the pandemic. And Ellen came onto one of our Zooms and shared her cities of peace. So we're gonna hear from her directly. And I'm so grateful I recorded this video. Okay, so let me do a little screen share. Please bear with me while I pull it up. Fall to all of you, hello, hello. And how lovely both to see the Pollock uh, studio and home and Pollock and Krasner and, and for you also to honor Lee Krasner um, and also Fabiana, how great to see your work and uh, listen to the music and hear one of your musicians. So I wanna tell everybody that Ani Manana uh, is also on a call. She was our one of our very youngest uh, interns, um, students. She was 17. Uh, she's in from Armenia. And Yay. we will show you the Armenian painting uh, in a few moments. Uh, she's now in Bulgaria. So it's wonderful that she can join us. So in brief, um, Cities of Peace, is a collection of monumental gold illuminated paintings created with artists and scholars and students um, from more than uh, 33 countries. And the goal of the work is to, well, one of the principles is we never show violence, we never show war, we never show destruction. We instead honor the beauty and history of the culture. 
so that beauty becomes our doorway to peace. So all these paintings are very large. If we if we go back one moment to the one just before this, this is Lhasa, um, the capital of the, the of the of Tibet. We no longer know if Tibet is a country, a region, what it is. So we honor the city. And just to give you a hint, um, these hands are true sizes of hands. And the gold leaf, every painting has four quality, four uh, characteristics. Everyone has gold, real gold, or silver or palladium, a variety of precious metals. Every painting has a map. Every painting has symbols of the culture, and every piece has a moment of red, of crimson in honor of the dead. So to give you a sense, the hands on this painting are literal handprints of everyone who worked on the painting from Venezuela, from Estonia, from Poland, from all over the world working on this. And I can talk for an hour on each painting, but we can look at the next. Uh, this is, um, so I'm not sure if one of my Kosovo artists is on the call. Um, this is one of the new works, which is really important. They're all important. Oh, she's, um, she can jump on the call. Let me just ask her. Um, just one second, I just got a note. Um, so this is, if she can speak now, this is a painting that honors Pristina, the capital of Kosovo. We were invited to Kosovo in honor of their, one, their 10th anniversary as a republic. And, um, the incredible uh, events in this painting is that we sat side by side a Kosovo Albanian with a Kosovo Serb whose parents murdered each other. And they would say they have no language in common. Uh, the Kosovo Serbs weren't speaking uh, Albanian. The Kosovo Albanian speak Serbian. The Kosovo Serbs didn't speak English. But what they did was pass to each other and they sat side by side teaching each other how to do the art of gold leaf. So um, I want to see if Arev can speak. Um, I hope she can. She, what we do is we bring one of the students or artists or uh, interns from one city to the next city. So Arev is Armenian and she came to Kosovo, which is part of the value of this work as cultural diplomacy, sharing cultures. So Arev came and worked with all the artists of Kosovo to create this work. Um, Arev, are you on? I'm not sure where she is, if she can speak up um, and just say hello. I'm not seeing her at the moment, so let's hope she, she will speak. Um, and I'm happy to ask question, answer questions, happy to ask questions, answer questions about any of the work. This is Hiroshima. Um, this was, so I too live in the Hamptons around the corner from Pollock. Um, I too have a tiny, uh, had a tiny studio with a paint spattered floor. And from around the world came young artists to work on these pieces. This is actually a map of Hiroshima right before the United States dropped the bomb. And that's important because who is a victim? Who is a perpetrator? Who bombs who? Who does what? 
And this is about the, the, what you're seeing that looks pink, like it's called moon gold, not the flowers, but the abstract shapes are actually the waterways. And the white gold is the land. And this is actually a map from a photograph taken by the US military right before the United States dropped the bomb. But it, the goal of this work is the transformation, and as Fabiana said, healing, the transformation of anguish into beauty. And so here, they're standing figures, true scale, traced, and they're neither victims nor angry, they're witnesses. And that's part of what we encourage, holding space, bearing witness for each other. And uh, so there, and then there's one dancing figure in the middle, cascading across the entire painting is the winter blooming plum blossom, which symbolizes everlasting life. So um, that's what this one is. They're all about uh, two, three meters by four meters on Belgian linen. Ellen, uh, that was remarkable what you said about transformation. And as I'm looking at this artwork, I see it in an abstract way as well. And I see the gestures, which although it's completely different than Pollock, it has a similarity in that it could look like you're looking at an aerial view, or then you could see it as sort of frontal and standing up. And Pollock's face also does that as well in his paintings. So I'm seeing a connection between your painting, Fabiana, and Pollock. I painted in a little barn across the street from with, a, with a little dog. With a little dog, and I won a Pollock Krausner Award when I was painting in this little barn across the street. But Joyce, you're so apt because I have a belief in the nature of gesture the nature of the breath and the body that, that we don't paint with a tight wrist and a tight hand. We paint with our arm, we use the breath, we move, we use the whole body. And I have a feeling about mistakes, that every mistake, which we call oops, every mistake is an opportunity for a creation. And so we retain original gestures that may have been mistakes. So Ani, can you speak up now? This is Yerevan to know wisdom. So I'm hoping Ani can hear me and unmute. Yes, I, uh, can you hear me? Yeah. Oh. <laughs> so, um, excuse me, where are, you, where are you speaking from, please? Uh, I'm in Sofia, Bulgaria now. Go ahead, thank you. Um, well, a uh, big part of this, um, we worked in the beginning on the idea of uh, what the painting has to symbolize. And every, every single uh, symbol on this painting has its meaning, starting from the Armenian letters on the uh, left side. This, this is the alphabet uh, created by Master of Mashtots. And in the middle of it, you can see in English the, sen the first sentence that was spelled by, uh, by the creator of the alphabet. Um, we have uh, the symbols of uh, each uh, old capital of Armenia. And uh, I have to say that while we were working on this, I have never felt like uh, I never felt more connected to my own culture. So this was something incre incredible that Ellen did to each one of us, I think. Uh, she brought us uh, this feeling of peace, <laughs> which is the name of the project actually. And uh, the whole process is engaging all uh, the people and every uh, single person in the team in the creation of this painting, which is uh, the most incredible thing about this project, I think. 
um, you're so beautiful. I love seeing you. So, Ani, will you say the sentence in Armenian so they can all hear how the Armenian language sounds? Uh, sure. So every Armenian is this sentence to know wisdom and guidance to provide the words of insight. That's beautiful. And so write that. Thank you so much. That is beautiful. Thank you so much. And that was very moving Thank to you. hear how this artwork this experience made Ani more connected to your own culture and that peace within. That's beautiful. Ani, oh, thank you. Can I chime in for a second? Um, this is Joyce. What, um, so how are you doing now? And are you working on anything creative now? Or can you bring us up to date for yourself? Oh, yes. Yes, uh, sure. So I'm studying architecture. When I when we were working on this project, it was 2015, and it was the um, hundred years of commemoration of Armenian genocide. But that's not the important part. I just graduated from high school then, and um, now I'm studying architecture, and I'm uh, working on creating an um, NGO which will work with. Um, with uh, cultural uh, programs to bring the youth and uh, people of different countries together to work on uh, projects and uh, most important to learn about other cultures. Um, so this is what I'm in the middle of currently. That's, uh, I'm, that's incredibly beautiful and I see a really beautiful theme of collaboration in this meeting. A lot of times with modern art, we think about an artist working alone, like Jackson Pollock in the studio alone, you know. Um, but a lot of art is done in collaboration as well. And of course, to hear each other's ideas in and of itself is a form of collaboration. Ellen, do um, you want to wrap up? We're going to go to the next speaker. Would you like to have closing words? No, I'd like to have two more minutes, please, because sure. Rev Gregorian um, is on the call. She is a wonderful Armenian artist, um, like Ani. Uh, our Rev is, um, if we can go back a moment to the Pristina painting. Um, one more back. There, a Rev came to Kosovo, came from Armenia to Kosovo to work with the all the artists and students from uh, from Kosovo while she was in Kosovo. So, a Rev, please speak a little about uh, this work and your experience and what you're doing now. Um, hello, everyone. Um, I don't know where to start because um, the experience was really unique and uh, uh, made a lot of difference for me because uh, before going to Kosovo, before starting this um, project together with Ellen, um, I only had some impression about Kosovo, about the war and the situation there. Uh, just slightly from the media, anything you hear, uh, but getting to know the people, the problems they they face uh, daily, the um, situation they live in, um, made a lot of impact. And you realize that the media says makes the image of the country of people, and everyone believes in it. And then you go and meet them and change your opinion about them. I know this, this is about people, not the art, but that's uh, the first thing that uh, comes to my mind when I think back about the, the project and the time I spent in Kosovo. Um, I actually didn't have time to, to make up a text or, or, or a speech about the project because I was really busy with the baby. Oh, well, are we going to see the baby? 
No, I finally was able to put him to sleep, so we hope he's there <laughs> sleeping. Um, but I would gladly answer questions if, uh, that will, would help me to make up my mind. Well, Arev, do you want to just say a moment about the symbolism and the meaning of gold leaf and teaching everyone about gold? Um, in, I think the experience we had here in Yerevan and um, with the same technique, I mean, it was gold, gold leafing and uh, working with uh, materials connected with earth and uh, nature. Uh, I mean, the clays, uh, different shades of clays. Um, there, even though the materials were similar, but the experience was very different. Um, because in Kosovo, um, we were working with lines, with twisted lines, a lot of, a lot of them, a whole mass of lines, and uh, it had a special meaning for us back then uh, when we were starting. No, Ellen, do you agree with me? <laughs> with them? I agree, and um... because that intertwining was what we were facing every day. Uh, there we were facing stories from different sides and it was all stories of people, stories of country um, and not really clear what was the, the real thread between all the mess of other threads. Um, and when we came to having this idea, um, yeah, I suppose while working um, on it, it helped us to to realize what was going going on, at least some part of it, or some uh, catching some of the threads that was uh, so unclear for us. So uh, inspired by filigree, the tiniest, um, it's a whole painting made of teeny tiny marks. And at the end, we had everybody from uh, an Ashkali Egyptian young woman to the president of Kosovo put marks on the painting. So it is more than 300 people put marks on the work um, in addition to the core artists who did it. So Joyce, you'd like me to wrap up um, because of time? I, every artist here, we could spend at least an hour and it's fascinating ellen i have learned so much and thank you to the two young women who came on and what stood out to me especially was the comment on how when you get to know people you realize they're not so different you your perception completely changes and i just thought that was so beautiful and it's so beautifully illustrated in your collaborative project. So thank you so much. So next up, I'm going to introduce as a photographer, Catherine Jones. Okay, everyone. Um, so if you would like to see that entire video, you can um, go to my YouTube channel and you can also listen to it again. So I think that was I, I heard it again and it, I've heard so much I didn't hear the first time. And um, now I'm so, oh, by the way, I forgot to read Ellen's bio. So just bear with me a moment, okay? Her bio and her credentials are so outstanding. Um, <clears throat> you can go to the website to read more about her. Um, but I'm gonna focus right now on the cities of peace aspect. So, um, in 2004, Ellen, uh, Dr. Frank founded the Ellen Frank Illuminated Arts Foundation Incorporated. This is a nonprofit global organization dedicated to the transformative power of art to build a culture of understanding and peace. Cities of Peace Illuminated is its primary initiative. And as artistic director, Dr. Frank has trained artists interns from more than 52 countries and unites scholars and experts to work on its joint creations. 
In 2018, Dr. Frank was named Fulbright Specialist in Peace Building and Reconciliation, U.S. Department of State's Bureau of Educational and Cultural Affairs and World Learning, and received an award for excellence for Cities of Peace from uh, KFOR slash NATO. Um, but that is just like a small part of what Ellen has done and her credentials. So I do encourage you, I put the two websites in the chat and I encourage you to follow up and learn more. And so now it is a great pleasure to introduce Stephen Dickman, Ellen's husband, who is also a creative uh, person. He's a composer and a musician. And a welcome to Stephen Dickman. Hi, everybody. So Joyce, that, that, that was... That was terrific. Um, and to hear all, uh, to hear Ellen talk, of course, uh, but all the interns, uh, and hopefully you'll be hearing some more interns uh, today. And I will say that, uh, and I will, I'm just going to go over, El you know, uh, a, a little bit about uh, Ellen. Uh, well, and my experience uh, meeting the interns and when Ellen went overseas to, to work. So, but, but first, uh, so I first met Ellen in California when she was leaving the university. She was uh, a professor there, tenured professor. She uh, decided to quit teaching in order to uh, paint. So that's the condition, the, uh, the moment that I met her. I helped her move out of her her office and um, she had some, we, we found some uh, barns south of, San, south of San Francisco where she painted. At, she also had a studio in, uh, in San Francisco. Um, and at a certain point uh, she said, well, maybe San Francisco is a little bit too provincial so we should move to New York. So which is what we did. We moved to New York. And um, for a time, we lived in New York, then we moved up to the Berkshires for a little while. And then we moved, we uh, uh, spent uh, some time uh, on the Cape visiting a, a teacher that I had. And at Brandeis, and, and at uh, on, on the Cape, we met a gentleman named B.H. Friedman, who, who wrote a book about uh, Jackson Pollock. And he said, "Well, you should you should move to the Hamptons." So uh, we went to check it out, and uh, for Ellen, the light was terrific. It was by the water. She grew up by the water in in L.A. So uh, we spent some summers, I mean, some winters, um, uh, renting places in various places, and then we fi we finally ended up where we are. So. Um, in the beginning, she had a little painting studio, which was the garage, which was where all the first nine cities of peace paintings were uh, were created. Um, so it, we, we have a studio show up now of earlier paintings before she started the foundation in 2004. But so in 2004, she, she um, put an ad, I guess, in Craigslist, maybe some of the interns can, can talk about it. And we had, uh, not so long after, we had a house full of uh, people from all over the world coming to work with Ellen. And um, that was quite an experience for me. <laughs> I mean, it was a wonderful experience um, to see everybody's enthusiasm. I, I would love to hear maybe from... Uh, some of the people who came at that time, if, if they're on, to talk about what brought them here, what, what, what made them decide to come to the United States and to work with Ellen at that time. Uh, because basically they saw uh, the ad at Craigslist, Ellen interviewed them and, and then they came. And they worked day and night on the work. I mean, it was, uh, it was remarkable. It was inspiring, and if you there's a video of uh, interns working on the work uh, that uh, Don Lenzer did called "The Making of Cities of Peace." You can see that on the Cities of Peace website. Um, 
So after uh, the nine paintings, uh, we went, or Ellen went to uh, uh, to Yerevan. And how did that happen? Well, Ellen was was uh, you know like she does a lot. She meets people online, and she's met a lot of people online who she had incredible relationships with Jeff Spur at, uh, at, at Harvard and in many places, places where she did research and the interns did research on the various cities that she painted. So she met somebody uh, online, uh, a, a woman named Dahlia, who uh, was the wife of the, the uh, head of the university in Yerevan, the Russian Armenian University. So she was invited to go to Yerevan to uh, to create the Yerevan paintings, which uh, which you just saw. And you met Arev, who is just uh, you know a remarkable, wonderful person. So my experience, which I can tell you briefly was, uh, so Ellen had never done anything like that before. She's had people come to the United States to work with her, but here she was going to a foreign country to create a painting and, on, you know, in a certain, certain time frame, and to have it um, exhibited. So, so Ellen was given a space to work at the university and, um, I came about a month later, and oh, I became the photographer. So, but but uh, so I, you you come into this place where the uh, everybody is working, and there may, maybe a dozen people coming every day, working together. They became a community working on this painting, and the painting. I, you know, it, it appears uh, how she did it. I, I have no idea. I, I, re I really don't. Um, and there was a certain point, I remember when the letters were being put on that I never thought it would get done in time, but it, it did get done in time. And she had the cleaning lady make a mark on the painting. She had, uh, uh, you know, how many people she welcomed into the, uh, into the space where they, I mean, where they dance, where they, you know, learned about each other. I mean, it was a wonderful experience for me, but I'm, I can say that it, it must have been a wonderful experience also for the interns who were all just, uh, I mean, it, it, I can say that it enriched my life incredibly. And, um, so, and she had a wonderful exhibit of the painting in the museum there. Um, it, it was very well, very welcomed. And then, and then uh, uh, she had been to a, a, on a trip with a friend from uh, from Sweden, and uh, traveling. And they ended up uh, together traveling into Krakow, and they entered a. They saw something interesting there, and they went into a building, and she got to know somebody who was the director of this person who was the director of the museum, and um, so she had the Cities of Peace treasure suite. It was exhibited in Auschwitz for the 70th anniversary of the liberation of Auschwitz. And that's how that happened. So, and then she went back, the most recent one was the seven, the, for the 75th anniversary of liberation of Auschwitz, which she created in Krakow. And um, there she had hundreds, literally hundreds of people from, from uh, Holocaust survivors to young people to, uh, Muslim groups that came through to that made marks on the painting. It it, it, it was certainly remarkable. But I'm going to end with um, with with Kosovo because the gentleman you're going to see speaking 
here speaking right after after me uh, is uh, is the director of the museum in in Kosovo, or Ellenberg, and uh, I'm only going to give one anecdote uh, before I introduce him. But, but he is he uh, well. First, he was very he came very close to Ellen and and to me, uh, and I love this guy. Um, She's just a wonderful, I, I met his family. I came with uh, with Julia, who uh, hopefully you'll meet. She's the, the uh, uh, my assistant in Vienna and we went together to Kosovo and we stayed with uh, Skender and his absolutely brilliant and wonderful family. So uh, I, I, I was um, at home and Ellen was in Kosovo and she gives me a call. And this was just like a week after she got there. And she said, Steve, you won't believe what just happened. And I, you know, I, I burst and I, I cry every time I think about it. What happened was that out of the blue, they, these people who hardly knew her gave her a surprise birthday party. So, uh, so that, that was my, my introduction to to Kosovo and and truly they are everybody I've met there was just wonderful people welcoming me welcoming Ellen and I don't think she was anywhere more welcomed than she was in Kosovo so um, that said I will introduce you to my my brother who is not my brother Skender, I would love to hear from you now. We'll take some questions at the end. In the meantime, are any of the interns um, on the Zoom tribute who would like to share? Then I will start as uh, one of the interns that work with Ellen. A good afternoon to everybody and thank you very much, Steve, for inviting me uh, to speak at this event. Um, I come from Slovenia and um, for me um, it is an honor to, to be able to say a few words about Ellen and her work, um, but at the same time preparing those few words was also very difficult for me uh, because it was painful since the memories about our time together are filled with the sadness that she is gone. Um, she reached out a couple of times after we worked together, but I was always so busy and, you know, time just flies by and suddenly Ellen is no longer here. Um, so this is my regret. I could not be in contact with her more. Um, but I've worked with Ellen on three different occasions. Uh, first, I came as an intern to her studio in New York in 2009. And then I returned in 2013. And then I went uh, to Armenia with her in 2018, uh, working on one of those cities of peace paintings, Yerevan to know wisdom. And um, in 2014, Ellen also visited Slovenia and we spent one week to together and we traveled and well, <laughs> did a lot of things. Um, but uh, I will start with a quote that I like. And this quote says that there are two things that essentially makes us wiser. And these are the books that we read and the people that we meet. And when I met Ellen, I was amazed and fascinated by her personality, a strong and inspiring woman, a skilled entrepreneur, an artist, who dedicated her heart to, to her work. And when I worked with her, I learned what a true leader and mentor can accomplish in teamwork. It's not just research and study and creative thinking and developing and uh, realization of ideas, but she also showed how with honesty, with um, open criticism, with empathy and with sense of humor, um, 
how you can teach about acceptance, about understanding, uh, about bridging the differences, and that in this way you can transform people. Um, for me, working with her was at the same time motivating and heartening, also tiring and hard, uh, but it was so, so rewarding. My meeting Ellen had a lasting impact on me uh, because it opened up my world and it made me grow as a person. Uh, I also visited places I otherwise would never visit. I've met nice, so many nice and caring people. I've made friends. And she showed that everything is possible if you are passionate and stubborn enough. Uh, my memories of Ellen also include um, visions of sun-drenched landscapes and historical monuments and snow blizzards and the smell of books and garlic glue. And I will never forget how she and Steve welcomed me into their home, how we made chai latte in the kitchen, how we ate sandwiches by the lake, and we conversed about everything and anything. This is something that will stay for me, with me for, forever. Um, so it was a really special privilege to have met Ellen and uh, to work with her. And uh, I wish for my daughter that just turned 15 months and for all the children in the world that there would be more of strong visionary artists like Ellen that would make their visions traverse borders and connect nations and change the world for better. Because as the world today shows us, her work and her message are needed more than ever. So it is with admiration and love and gratitude that I, for Ellen, that I finish my speech. And I thank you all for listening. Are there any other interns who would like to share? Okay, I do have a recording from one of the interns who couldn't be here. So I'll play this recording now, okay? So bear with me while I pull this up. Hi everyone. My name is Nechama and I knew Ellen since 2009. In 2009, I came to, um, to be an intern with her together with um, Masha and Ida, who I believe are present with you right now, um, to work on Hanukkah Illuminated and um, the Book of Judith uh, and a little bit on Cities of Peace. Um, and later on, I stayed in contact with her and um, I worked with her in Armenia, which was an amazing experience uh, as an assistant. And then I continued working as an assistant with her. Um, I'm sorry I can't be with you today. Unfortunately, um, to, I, I have a conference. I'm giving a workshop exactly at the same time at an art therapy conference in Minneapolis, which was planned a very long time ago. Um, but maybe it's fitting when I go to these conferences and I speak about art and healing. Um, Ellen is always on my mind. Um, she's um, affected my professional and personal life in so many ways, um, touched my, my work and my view of art and healing in so many, such a huge variety of ways. And the way she spoke passionately about art and about healing and the way she worked and the way the compassion she had and the empathy and the, the um, sort of never ending patience and curiosity and excitement follow me everywhere, especially when I'm doing something professional like doing a workshop with art at, um, at an art therapy conference. Um, she is with me and her work is with me and her work continues with me. I've been doing a doctorate, so I've been uh, a little, I've had a little less time to, um, to be as involved as I would have wanted to be in um, continuing her legacy, but I'm still here. Um, and I would, I, I, I really want to continue her legacy. Um, and in a sense, her legacy 
does continue with me because, um, as I said, she's um, painted my professional and personal life in so many ways, um, influenced it, inspired it, and left me with philosophical aesthetic and um, various self-reflective questions that um, continue to be with me and to occupy me till today in a positive way. Um, and thinking how art heals and how we bring people together and what, how we encourage understanding and uh, bring beauty to the world. Um, I'm thinking of all of you. I'm thinking of Ellen and um, I miss her like all of us, I guess, do. Um, and I hope to be able to speak more about her, to write more about her, to do more in the name of her legacy, and very importantly, to be in touch with those um, like you who knew her and who also want to continue her legacy. So I'm sending uh, warm wishes from Minneapolis from the Art Therapy Conference, and I'm thinking of Ellen here, and um, I wish she was here with us, but her spirit most definitely is. Hi, everyone. I hope you can hear me. We sure can. Yeah, <laughs> I'm Jim. I'm um, from Kosovo, right? Like currently living in Italy. Um, I worked with Ellen 2018 in the project uh, Pristina the Flowering in, in, in um, yeah, in Pristina. So um, after after that project, I moved to Italy in 2019, exactly to work for the same arguments that Alan was um, treating for uh, with uh, conflict resolution, because I was chosen by an organization to work here for two years. And then I followed, let's say, Alan's uh, dream to find a way for reducing armed conflict. Um, I'm an artist as well, and uh, that's what I can say is Ellen um, influenced a lot of my life and the way how to, to see conflicts, actually, the way how we can see the resolutions through art as well. Um, like after 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 it, we started to to talk with Helen for future projects and what we can what we can do even though here in Italy, um, and actually it worked out, and we are trying to do like trying to continue our her dream, our dream, as well with Julia and the other participants from Kosovo, to create a new painting here in Italy, and I'm very very happy for that. I know, Ellen, uh, we are going to miss her. We are missing her, but we are going to miss her during the project. Uh, I hope we are able to share the same energy what she did to, the, to all the participants. We will try very hard. <laughs> and, um, but her empathy was, was amazing. So she left, us, left it at us and, and hopefully we We'll make it up somehow. <laughs> Thank you so much, guys. And very lovely to see all of you. Thank you so much. And uh, Stephen, who did you say is the next person? Exxon. Exxon, are you there? Yeah, I'm here. Okay. <laughs> Hi, everyone. It's so nice to be here. So I, I'm Exxon. I participated in, in two of Ellen's projects in Kosovo, in Pristina. The first contact I, I had with, with uh, Ellen, my father used to work at the museum. And uh, the, the museum workers notified me that an, an, an amazing project is coming to the museum. And I immediately applied. And the, the, the first contact I had with Ellen, I knew I... Knew I I felt I had a friend for life. And I knew I was going to make amazing memories and uh, have an amazing time working with her. So uh, I've, I've worked a lot of things. 
I've experimented a lot with work, but working with with Alan in those projects was my 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 best working experience. Uh, I got to to meet a lot of people all around the world. I got to to meet a lot of wonderful people that were here. That Ellen just got me in contact with them, and I'm still uh, I'm still friends with them. I still have a great time with them. So I think Ellen will live forever in me and in my life, and I think in yours too. Mm -hmm. so thank you thank you all for being here thank you so much Joyce could I just say one word about Exxon yeah, yeah. so so I, I was staying uh, in his father's house and he was he was there also and I needed uh, I was after I left Kosovo I was going to visit a friend in Corfu in Greece uh, and there was no public transportation to go to uh, uh Rhonda. to Corf to Corfu yeah yeah so 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 what uh, what did uh, Exxon do uh with his girlfriend uh we got into a car and they drove all day uh to take me to the ferry and um uh, I will never uh, forget that that uh, that uh generosity and, and Exxon, yeah, I mean, you have no idea how wonderful these people are. Exxon is one of the best people you could ever, ever want to meet. So I thank you, Exxon. Yeah, thank you, Steve, for coming. And you know, you're always welcome here. Thank you. Our home is your home. Oh, okay. Thank, thank you. you so much. It's a great example of generosity goes a long way, right? So, um, now I would love to invite Christine, Christina Strafield um, from Guildhall to speak. Christina is the chief curator. Are you there, Christina? Yes, I am. Uh, can you hear me? Sure can. Great. Well, it's an honor to be here um, as we're all paying tribute to a very, very special person, um, Ellen. Uh, she touched us all very, very deeply. Um, I want to say that I first um, became aware of Ellen's work when I was at Guildhall and um, the press release came across my desk that she had done a series of works um, that were based on Minoan Larnakis. Uh, these are burial vessels, which are like sarcophagi. Uh, and it just so happens that that was what my master's thesis was about. So I was blown away and I called her up immediately. And, um, you know, uh, we became friends at that point. And I was just, you know, just, I could not imagine that someone, a contemporary artist had found this work and had translated it and had created an, a tremendous new body of work around this sort of ancient burial uh, technique and the, and the drawings that were on it. It was just amazing. So I followed her work continuously. Um, she had called me again later, um, probably I think in 2009 and she was working on Cities of Peace. And um, she said, can you come to the studio? Can you come? Because I want to show you some work that I'm doing. And I remember being in their living room and sitting right next to Hiroshima and crying when she began talking about it because it was so moving. And uh, it, it just, it touched my soul. It totally touched my soul. I said, this exhibition is coming to Guildhall and we were able to mount it in 2011. Uh, it was one of the most spectacular exhibitions and one of the most moving for me. Uh, people came to the museum. They came several times. They would stand in front of the work. They would cry. Uh, they would. They would. They were just. Everyone was just blown away by it. It was just. We had school groups in. We did a day of peace celebration. It was just spectacular. Um, when the exhibition finished, Ellen asked me to be on the board of trustees for Cities of Peace, and I said I would be totally honored to do that. Uh, we were able shortly afterwards to get a part of the uh, treasure suite was given to Guildhall. And we showed that in 2015 in a recent exhibition, a uh, recent acquisitions exhibition. Again, people were so excited to see that work. Um, I was then asked by Ellen uh, to serve as the guest curator when Cities of Peace went to the Lyme Academy, a uh, College of Fine Arts. And that was truly, again, a wonderful experience um, to unveil the new painting that she had presented at that time, which was really very, very exciting. Um, and I was able to work with her uh, she would ask questions about uh, activities, 
what to do, transportation. So it was it was very, really very, very moving. Uh, I will always remember her, her excitement, her passion for her work. I think everyone around us, including uh, Genevieve Linehan, who I knew was here, who was with us at Guild, where, who we worked with together at Guild Hall, was so inspired by her and her energy, her spirit, and her dedication. And she'll always be remembered and she'll always hold a very, very special place in my heart. So thank you for doing this. Um, and, um, you know, uh, in Greek, we say memory eternal, and I totally feel that memory eternal for Ellen. Thank you. Christina, thank you so much. Is there anyone else who would like to share? Um, <clears throat> any up? other people who worked with Ellen or perhaps are friends and just want to come on and say a few words. Um, so hi, everyone. Um, I'm Julia. I've been Ellen's assistant between 2020 and until she passed away. And even though we never had a chance to meet in person and give each other a hug, over the course of time, spending every day together, brainstorming new projects, ideas, and plans, and designing certain um, open calls and so on, we grew very tight together. And at the beginning, I was a little bit intimidated by her presence, but very quickly we started to open up and we then became quite silly and had our own languages and jokes. and. It was a lot of fun to work with her, even though we also had very intense working times where we were very productive and we were very proud of the work that we were doing together. I am so grateful for all the authors we had and even the tiniest successes that we could share together. Um, also for the knowledge and all the stories which she shared with me and all the trust which she put in me. And I have been in email contact with some of you guys um, for certain Zoom meetings she had with you. So I know your names, but I don't know really a face to it, but I know um, that you are in, you were in the heart of Ellen and she was thinking about you a lot. And yes, she also had this beautiful talent to bring people together and create an atmosphere where friendships can flourish and yeah Ellen I'm very thankful for everything and for the love the authors we had the beauty you showed to me and all these wonderful people whom you connected me with and Steve and everyone and I will always remember that thank, thank you Julia, thank you so much. And who was the next intern who you mentioned, Julia? Brilliant. Mm -hmm. Would you like to speak? See, can you hear me? Yes, if we can. I am Ellen's brother. Yes. And, okay. I've, and I've been watching and listening and very moved by all the discussion about her work and how she touched so many lives and it's a real tribute and uh, i just wanted to say all of you she's held in her heart and in her soul and her sense of admiration and closeness and she would share things with me from abroad but i never got to go to any of the meetings that she held over there i would see them on video but her work stems from a deep place in her heart that involves passion and compassion and an ability to put herself in the shoes of other people who have pain and suffering and then find the beauty in them and the strength inside of people and bring it out through her artwork and it's just a wonderful thing and i obviously will miss her i've known her since she was my little sister at birth and um she's always been funny and interested in the world and um i've learned a lot of things from her over the years so i wanted to just justin thank you so much okay. thank you for speaking 
I'll tell you what, what I would like to do now is um, I'd like to introduce a very close friend of Ellen's, uh, Heather, Heather Dune. Heather, are you here? Um, Heather sent a video tribute, which she wanted to uh, share at um, her memorial, but um, they ran out of time. So I would like to play the tribute now to Ellen. Okay. Hi, everybody. Sorry, I can't be there today. Um, I uh, I am really honored to be able to participate uh, and share some thoughts. Um, I'm Heather Dune McAdam, and I've known Ellen and Steve and Nissa for 22 years. And I sat on the board of Cities of Peace Auschwitz. In the past 10 years, my husband and I have lost 10 friends, now 11. Uh, and family to pancreatic cancer. Uh, Alan is the 11th. And this is, um, I have a ribbon for, for pancreatic cancer awareness. It's a, it's a purple ribbon that I wear all the time. In November, last November, gosh, that's a year ago, isn't it? I got a text from Ellen, who was in Southampton Hospital. It was 7.59 in the morning, Sunday morning. She loved to text me before I woke it up. And she texted, can you come now? And I texted back, am I allowed? And she said, only if you're a member of a new cult to which I belong. And I texted applying for membership now. Somehow I got all the way up to her room without anyone stopping me. She didn't even look surprised when I showed up. Instead, the first thing she said to me was, what's the prayer for the day? I tried to come up with something quickly. And she said, well, I was hoping you'd say, and then she told me the prayer she wanted to hear. So I knelt on the floor and we said her prayer out loud. I couldn't touch her because of COVID and she was uh, immune compromised. Um, so uh, I couldn't hold her hand, but I sat there on the floor and prayed with her. And then security arrived and escorted me out. There aren't a lot of people that would break into a hospital floor. There are even fewer that I would go to Auschwitz with. Ellen, Steve, Nissa, and I went to Auschwitz with our filmmaker friend, Stephen Hopkins, for the 75th anniversary of the liberation of Auschwitz. There was a blizzard that night, and Ellen and I walked hand in hand toward the memorial, asking if it was possible in a place like Auschwitz to practice Tikkun Alam, preparing the world. Her answer was the Tibetan breathing practice of Tongban. We stood in front of the crematorium memorial, holding hands, inhaling the grief, the sorrow, and the horror of that place, and exhaling peace, love, purpose, and gold. Paintings of cities of peace Auschwitz came out of that snowy night. She set the constellations in a golden sky and had each star painted by artists from Kosovo, Poland, Armenia, America, and more, as well as non-artists. Every star represented a spirit, every square of gold, a life. That painting is the gold of her life as well. When I think of Ellen, I see her surrounded by a magnificent golden light like that painting. We know that Ellen lives on in those canvases as well as her message of peace to the world. But Ellen was more than an artist. She was an angel. She was a spirit. She was a mother. She was a friend. She was a wife. She was a work of art, like and like the artist she is, I feel Ellen beside us, transforming us with her faith, creative genius, and passion. I would like to ask if we could all take a moment to practice Tanglin together, taking three breaths, inhaling this collective grief and sorrow, 
of everyone here today and exhaling peace and love to those still suffering most from this enormous loss in our lives. I would like to speak. Uh, I was an intern with Ellen in Kosovo also. I, I'm sorry, before the sound didn't work. I was trying to speak, but it wasn't working. So now it's better, I think. Can you introduce yourself? Yes, I am Lilian Sadiku. I come from Kosovo. Mm -hmm. uh, I have been studying for architecture back in time when with, uh, we met with Ellen, but I was also involved into arts and from a gallery uh, in my city, uh, I knew about this project coming in Kosovo. And then uh, I joined the, the project uh, working with Ellen and uh, Arev and so many other uh, people that came to Kosovo to work in the Pristina uh, painting. Uh, I had the great opportunity to work with Ellen and with so many great people uh, coming from different parts of the world, but also meeting with them in Kosovo. Uh, Ellen, uh, with her way of seeing the world through peace and through love for arts and for culture and her love for culture uh, opened my horizons of thinking and understanding of so many things that I was not aware of uh, being, uh, being surrounded by so many great things. Um, I was studying for architecture, but I never had such a niche into seeing the things uh, through art and through beauty as her vision was uh, into thinking and into creating. Um, she had visited my uh, family, my home in Mitrovica and my city. My city is now uh, a divided city between Albanians and the Serbians. But actually in this painting, we had the opportunity to work uh, with different communities in Kosovo in the same uh, painting side by side and working together into the painting. And through, through working together, we saw that we have so much more in common that we have things that divide us, even though we had the war and we had the, uh, we had the bad things that happened through the history, we still have so much richness into the history and into the culture through the years that we have created together and that we should appreciate and that we should cultivate into the future, creating a world understanding through peace and through art. Uh, today, I am living in Germany where I made my masters for architecture. Uh, I'm working here uh, in a multidisciplinary office where we work with uh, different artists and different uh, thinkers uh, in Germany, but also worldwide. Just to mention some of them, I'm working with Tony Craig, Johannes Trieb, and so many others. With uh, 
with an artist here, Johannes Street. We are working in a, uh, trying to create a sculpture in the Osnabrück uh, to promote peace and to, to promote uh, world understanding of peace through art in, in the way, in another way that Johannes Trieb is trying to uh, create through his art, but also in me, it, uh, it has that awareness of building peace and building culture and building common ground for the people uh, for, um, in order to find uh, really what is important and what we should uh, value through peace and through art. I would like to finish my my speak with a word that Ellen really loved in uh, in my uh, native language in Albanian. Uh, she she loved the word faliminderit, in meaning um, this is the word that how we say thank you or thanks. Uh, but literal translation of it is in the honor. Uh, Uh, prayer to the honor. So I pray so to your honor. I pray to the honor. Yes. Yeah. Uh, in, in this way, I would uh, love to uh, to thank her, her spirit and her thinking that brought honor to all of us through art and through thinking, and to the world that she left her, her great uh, legacy that the world can appreciate uh, through looking at her art and remembering that what is really important for all of us is to build peace and to build honor uh, to each one of us. So thank you, thank you so much. It's a real a pleasure to meet all of you here and to remember her great legacy and her great spirit that will live with us in our all futures. Thank you. Okay, I saw oh, Jeff. Unmute, do you hear me now? We sure can, yes. Okay. Yes, Christina said a lot of what um, I would have said in working with Ellen at the Guildhall on the show, and I'm, I'm not very good, and I hope I can get through this, but I thought what I'd just do is read a poem I wrote. As you know, a lot of us here wrote something to Ellen when she was in the hospital near the end, and I had trouble writing it, but it just came so fluently, which it usually doesn't with me um, because it was so heartfelt. So I'm gonna read the poem I wrote to her, it's very short and I hope I can get through it. <laughs> um, um, uh, Ellen Deere, our emissary of peace, our ambassador of love, fierce fighter for an end to fighting. We wish you the peace you wished for all the world. Rest in quiet and content that the lives of those you touched are richer, deeper, more ablaze with your passion for justice, peace, love, and all that is good and beautiful because they knew you, Ellen Deer. Jenny, Thank you. That is so beautiful. I put on the screen share this beautiful picture of Ellen Frank. And um, I would like to thank everyone today for coming on and sharing, and especially Ellen's husband, Stephen Dickman. And um, I Please. just, have so much inspiration to take away from this talk about art and humanity and um, also about following that vision, especially if it's something for the good of people. I, I do personally think the universe likes that and, and fosters it and the right people come into a person's life. So this was very, very affirming. And if you would like to follow up, um, I'm just going to send you the websites. So hold on. I'm going to put it in the chat. Whoop, there we go. Uh, there are two websites. One is citiesofpeace.org. And the other one is the artwork archive site that has Ellen's work. And um, you could also visit Ellen's studio if you're in the area. You could contact Stephen Dickman. And um, you could also watch the video and this will be also shown on my YouTube channel once it's edited. So I put my YouTube link in there and um, you could see also other past talks from the Pollock House. And um, is there anyone who has a burning desire to say something who didn't get to say something? Um, who, I, I would yeah. say very short. 
Ellen was my friend for um, 30, I guess it's about 34 years. And um, I'm not an artist. I was always a teacher. And we didn't have that in common, but I met when she needed a nursery school for uh, her daughter, Nissa. And that didn't actually come about, but we became friends. And so we shared, you know, many things. And she was probably my most, I would say, intelligent, uh, exciting. There was always something new she was involved with. And a very different friend in the best way. So uh, I, I enjoyed listening to everybody and how much she touched everyone. And uh, she touched other people in, in other ways as well, not just with her art, but her whole personality. Just, uh, you know, just so enthusiastic and uh, just an ex a, a joy of living. And um, so she was a very special friend and she considered myself, my husband as family. She would always talk about, we lived very close by and of course, Steve too. And so, of course, we miss her terribly. And um, but I'm so I'm so pleased to see that her legacy continues, and um, that her artwork will continue, you know, to uh, to please so many people as we go forward, and hopefully help with peace as well, because that was her that was her dream. Nancy, you were also a model for her. Yes, I was. My hand is on, when you were talking about the hands on the artwork, one of those hands is my hand. <laughs> and one of the bodies was uh, partly my body, but she would always change it a little bit. And my daughter was one of her models too. <laughs> Beautiful. Well, I hope this conversation continues amongst all of these uh, wonderful creative people. So wherever you are, have a wonderful day or evening or morning. And um, I know we had a lot of positive uh, comments in the chat and I really appreciate everybody. So thank you. Thank you. Good afternoon.